it up a little bit if you can, if you think to, and then two coats go this way and this way. Okay. Let it let it dry. It doesn't take long to dry, and then go back. Watch for any ridges. I did take the sandpaper and smooth some ridges out, particularly here on her face, mm. because you don't always pay attention to that, and then you may have a big line going through their face, and you'll fight so you with that. So you two this way and two this way, four coats. Well, I went this way and this way, let it dry and then this way and this way okay. let it dry. And just watching your ridges, if you have a soft mop brush or something like that, like as it's drying, that you can kind of knock those ridges down because mm -hmm. you're looking for a smoother surface for the glazing so that the glaze doesn't um, settle down into grooves and mm -hmm. look kind of dirty. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get it a little bit smoother. Now mm -hmm. it's gonna feel a little daunting in the beginning when you first start putting your first layer of paint on this smooth surface. It's gonna be slick and feel a little bit like you're painting on glass. Yeah. So once you get, although the zinser really helps with that because it's it's a, it's got a little tooth to it, it'll grip. Um, but once you get your first layer of raw umber and white on there, it's you're it's going to feel fine. You're not going to struggle with it so much more. Um, the key thing, and I'll talk about this next week, is going to be to remember. Uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate it next week, but we're going to put our white and raw umber on an absorbent surface to try to pull some of the oil out. Mm -hmm. And we're going to really look at our paint before you squeeze it out and make sure it's not a real, real oily paint because you want a stiffer paint for this first layer that has less oil. We want it to be fat over lean and we want it to have less, you know, we want it to be um, sort of powdery ish, not really powdery, but you don't want it to be real thin and transparent and drippy. That's what happened to me at Max Ginsburg's workshop. I was working on this surface um, and I, he wanted us to use lots of mineral spirits and draw with it and then I was just, I was beside myself because it was just transparent and dripping. On this, it was like I was painting on a window or something and it just wouldn't cover. So it was really unnerving. What I wanted to do first is just flip through these pictures to talk to you a little bit. I had a client uh, that came twice in the last week um, and wants me to paint his children. He's the photos they have, or like we deal with sometimes when we're bringing our photos in, they either were not good shots of the kids. Um, Charlene, was it you that just showed me? Oh yeah, that she is. She was way above her subject, which she was shooting down, so that distorted, made the chin look a little long. Uh, the photos like that, they brought me 70. And the man was like, fussing with his wife a little bit, like, well, we've, we've already taken 70 pictures. And it's like, I, and I said, well, when I shoot, like with Sydney that day, I probably shot 400 pictures of her. And I've pulled out, these are on my Facebook page, just ones that I shared with her, but I pulled out maybe 50 of them that I thought were, were pretty good. So I wanted to flip through those real quick, some of those, now I'm not gonna go through all of them, um, and just show you a few, and how I shoot constantly. Because you have these digi digital cameras, you don't just have to go and then wait for them to do a whole bunch of different things. You just move your body and you just shoot. Because honestly, just the turn of the head this much, the eyes may be a little bit, you know, uh, more relaxed. They may be open wide. Within just a few seconds, the posture, the look can really, really change. And you don't know when you're shooting if you're getting... You don't really, even when you look in the, in the window, you can't really tell what you have. So I go back through and look. Um, you know, I got lots of different shots of her. I just kept, and there's many, many in between these probably. Um, she's so pretty. She's lovely. She's such a pretty girl. She really doesn't take a bad picture at all. Uh, what I was looking for, and I let her look through these with me last week uh, because I didn't want to paint one that she hated. You know, that's important, and she's a young, at a young age, so she has a certain view of herself, you know. So there's certain things about her that she's self-conscious of that I, we would not even notice because we just think everything about her is absolutely gorgeous. So talking to the person, if you know, if you want, within reason, if you're getting permission from them to paint, but it is an important part of the process. Um, I like these pictures. I think they're very interesting. They give a very different mm -hmm. feel. I will caution you though, as you, if you paint somebody that's looking down, there's a, there's a different set of challenges mm -hmm. with that. It, sometimes what looks beautiful on a photograph doesn't always translate as well in a painting. 
And that, uh, the only way I know is to tell you that it comes from just trying, right. trial and error, and not being afraid to try it, because it's a lovely shot of her. Uh, <clears throat> there's a little bit more light. This is what I'm talking about when I'm, uh, it, this is a, this monitor is not the best, but it's a little bit oversaturated on the right side. I don't know if you could tell what that means, but uh, uh, overexposed, I should say. All the color is washed out. So there's really no information in your hand and really right there on the top of her forehead that it's just all white. So I'll take that back in Photoshop and play with it a little bit, but I don't want it to be totally like that for the most part. Um, so let me just keep going to, till I find the one I finally <clears throat> settled on with her. I settled on this one with her, um, and the color is a little bit off on this monitor, but um, I like, what I love about this is her eyes. Out of most of all the pictures that I took, her eyes were so blue in this. And they really, the light is hitting right across that plane of her face. And it's really featuring her eyes really well. Uh, the, the, the blueness of them, they're just lovely. Um, I also wanted her braid because that's such a part of her beauty. I wanted to see a little indication of her hair. I do not like the way... The um, shawl is, she had pulled it up on one side and I just happened to catch her. I'm going to have different elements in there that you don't like. So I did take it in Photoshop, and I, but I just kind of blurred it out. Um, and I don't know how I'll handle that yet. I may put a little indication of the black shawl coming straight down on that side. I may just leave it blurred. I don't really know what I'm going to do with it yet. You can kind of see here. Um, it has a different feel to it. But that, that's kind of my thinking about why I chose that. I had um, chosen one other one of her that I thought was really lovely. It just had an energy to it, but she didn't like it as much. And so she said, I don't care. She was so gracious. She said, I don't care which one you do. But um, when I chose this one, she applauded. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that really told me what, that she really didn't want me to do the other one. Um, let me see if I can see it on here. She, it's one of these big toothy smiles, but that's kind of character. She has beautiful teeth, and and that one's really to keep women from seeing. That one's pretty. Her mouth's open a little bit. Um, that one I really liked. Now that's a different kind of a pose, though. I mean, that's not. I wanted to. I wanted something else for in here, but I'll probably paint that at some point. Um, <clears throat> that one I like. I really like that one. Um, I, I just think there's a brightness there also about her eyes, but she doesn't like this. So um, it's very difficult to say. So this is my method. I usually take 500, 800 pictures. I take a lot of pictures. I sit down, I drag them over into a folder. Ooh, I like this one. Ooh, I like this one. Then I end up with about 200. And then I'll narrow, I'll keep narrowing it down. And I usually don't make a decision. I'll, na I'll narrow it down to about 10. And then on another day, I'll come back and look at it because your moods change and what you're looking for changes. And I keep them in a folder. If the pictures, if I really like all of them, I'll keep them all in there because I'll just tell myself, oh, I'll paint them all at some point. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you can see what I've done on this picture, the one that I chose. Um, this is as shot. This is with the poster edges on it, the filter that gives a little bit of... Um, uh, of range of values so that that this is what I'll have everybody use uh, not today but once you get the charcoal drawing all finished we, or, and you can use this while you're drawing too it's helpful uh, but we, when we the first layer of raw umber and white that we put on we'll use the poster edge filter and we're going to put it in there in little mosaics like that before the the day is finished we're going to take a, a dry brush and just blend those little pieces together but that's really going to help you break it down and see the dark medium and light in your picture it's going to be so much easier for you just doing the white and raw umber not having to think about anything to do with color um, i will when i get ready to start glazing and putting color i'm going to um, probably go up here and add a little bit of saturation to her this monitor is a little different so um, than mine in there, but I'll bump this saturation up to give her, see how that's giving her more color. 
I, I'm an, I want more color in there to start with. So I'd rather see a little extra color. I can always tone it down than to be looking at something very um, pale, colorless, because your brain, whether you realize it or not, will reproduce what you see. Um, I, I painted from an old yellow photo years ago of my boys, <clears throat> even though I had another example of a nice skin tone next to it, I, I reverted back to that yellow every time. When, when I was in that unconscious mode of just painting, my unconscious mode went back to that yellow. So what you see really does come out. So you do have to be mindful of that as you're working. Um, so for today, I'm going to use mostly, I'm going to grayscale it, and I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use both images. I've printed them off. And it's fine to just use a print. Sometimes it's a little easier to use a print at this stage um, of the game. And I'm going to use charcoal <clears throat> and an eraser. That's basically all. I always keep a, a thin paintbrush in my hand to measure with and to check my plumb lines. I'm going to do a quick, just a gesture for, for, uh, for placement before I get started drawing any details here, just for size and placement. Um, and I'm not really going to draw any details. I'm going to kind of get the tilt a little bit and the size of where I'm going with her. The re again, the reason I like this charcoal is it's so fluid and it's easy for me to just rub it. Um, and I'm thinking her head is about three quarters of the length of the canvas. So I think that's about, I can pretty much eyeball that. Um, and I, that's about all I'm going to do to get started is to just kind of find a place and see if I can start to see her. The braid is coming out right there by her chin. Um, the other consideration is how she measures height to width. The widest place on her, I'm going to say, is right here across her eyebrows. And I'm going to see how that compares with her face. And it's this, almost the same as from her chin to her hairline. So I can come over here and really quickly make a quick estimate of how wide she should be. Eyebrows and then chin to hairline. And that's about right. I had put a little mark on here already. Just This is my perimeter here. And then I'm going to let her run off. And her hairline is about here. Maybe a little lower. Now, this, this goes for anything that you're drawing. If you're drawing uh, fruit, whatever you're drawing, I make a, a place for that first. I, if it, I find something that's a relative size. All I have with her really here is the head. So how many heads could I fit on this canvas? Um, I, I can fit one and two thirds maybe of a head on this canvas. If it were fruit, I would say, how many peaches can I fit? Um, if it's a landscape, you know, how many of those big oak trees can I fit? Find something of relative length and measure that and make yourself some parameters here so that you're not, you know, I'm leaving a little bit of room in front of her, not much. Um, I have a little bit of a feel for her on here already. Um, just a little, and I'm going to give it a little bit of a roundness just to, because I'm going to think about the roundness of her face, not a flat surface right from the get-go. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to check. These are just seconds to do this, really. It shouldn't take you a long time. If it takes you a long time, it's fine. There's no need to get in a rush. But the next thing I'm going to find is my halfway mark on her head. That's just very helpful for me in determining whether there's a tilt, where, where her eyes are, and where's my halfway mark before I spend a lot. Because the, the temptation will be to go ahead and start putting the fe features in without really checking this out. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to figure out right across her eyebrows where I was a minute ago about where the halfway mark and I'm going to guess it's right here by her eyebrow and it is the very end of her eyebrow is the halfway mark so I can come over here and check it I already put a little mark right there sometimes I can eyeball that the more you measure the the easier it is for you to guess right the first time and you're like <laughs> um, it's so nice when that happens. Uh, the next thing I'm going to find out is where is the, her halfway mark from top, from the top of head to chin. Uh, usually it's the eye 
the eyes are halfway down on an adult head. So I can assume that it's the eye, I can start there, but it's not on her. She's, she's tilted down, we can see the top of her head a little bit. So it's not the halfway mark. Uh, I'm gonna say maybe the top of her eye then. Let's see, nope. Let's say the top of her eyebrow. Nope, let's say the top of this eyebrow. That's closer. It's about right there is the halfway mark on her eyebrow. So I can come over here. This is the end of her eyebrow, right? Isn't that what I said a minute ago? Mm -hmm. That's the end of her eyebrow. And the halfway mark here, I have to adjust a little bit till I get it. Okay, it's about right there. So that's the, that's the halfway mark, just above her iris. Now I'm gonna make a little mental note of that because I've already given myself a compass so that I get her face right. This is the very center, so I can work out from here now. I already have a, a I'm not gonna just have to guess where to put her eyes. I have an idea of where to start. And of course, I've done this demonstration before, but the Daniel Green <coughs> was to start, to work your way down like a window shade being pulled down with the thirds of the face, then begin to work your way from the inside out instead of trying to do the perimeter. So the, the next thing I'm gonna look at is these thirds, from the hairline to the brows, from the brow to the nose, from the nose to the chin. And I'm gonna come over here and check and see how does she compare. I'm gonna use this halfway mark to see how many different levels there are on her eyebrows. There was a lot of variety there, so I just have to remember where I've measured. I'm gonna come right here over her iris and I'm gonna see how that compares. Look, it's exactly equal. Then from her nose to her chin is a little smaller because she's tilted down. So the more she goes down, the smaller and more compressed that area will be. So from here to here and here to here are exactly the same to her nostril. And then here to here is a little bit shorter. So let me go over here and check that. From here to here and here to here should be the same. That's about right. So those three considerations right there, this, this, and this are the most important parts of this whole entire drawing. So don't let yourself skimp on this part. Make sure you spend the time figuring that out. Go back and check it again and again if you need to. I'm gonna do it on this one. There to there. And that's, yeah, that's about a third shorter. Okay, so now I've got I've got my groundwork laid, and now I can start working my way down. And I'm gonna just, I'm gonna put the measuring stick down for a moment because I have that figured out. I will check my angle again, just to make sure I'm not too far off. Now, see, I've already misjudged her. I'm thinking that her eyes are like this. Look, but they're not. You make sure you have your, everything straight too, that's important. See, <laughs> there you go. So it is a little bit of a downward. And the only way that I, the, the best way to figure that is to hold something perfectly straight across there and see how it just bumps down just a tiny bit. So I'm gonna come back over here. I'm not gonna worry about her eyebrows for the moment. I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna put a little bit of an indication of where I think her eyes might go. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, here's her eyebrow. I'm gonna indicate the thickness of her eyebrow, which is not very much. The top of her eye, the bottom of her eye is about right there. Then I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing. Here's the top of her eyebrow. Here's the top of her eye. Lash line. Bottom of her eye. And she doesn't have any under eye indention there. All right, then I know her nose. I know about where it is this way, but I don't know yet which how you know how far to the right or to the left it goes. So I'm just going to put a, um, a little note here for the bottom of her nose. I don't see any shadow much. A little bit of a shadow under her nose, the top of her lip, the opening of her mouth. It's quite thin. Her bottom lip. It's about that big. And then she does have a little shadow under her lip. 
so that's given me the the step by step to, to walk down the uh, the length of her face and everything fit. If I had gotten really off, I would be able to tell right here. It would either be too big or too small. So I know that everything's probably pretty close to the right uh, proportion of heart. Now I have to figure out how everything works <coughs> from right to left, okay, and how wide. Uh, I'm going to check the width of her eye, and it's usually the same as from the top of the brow bone to the bottom of the eye. It's usually, and it is. So I can go back here and check that. That's the width of one eye, from the top of the brow bone to the bottom of the eye. So I can be reasonably certain that that's the right width of her eye. And put a little dot there. Now how, can we fit a whole eye in between there? Just about. Now, that depends. Do you measure from the tear duct to the end of the eye or to the end of the lashes? Just remember in your mind which one you measured. Either way. I usually find something that's equal so that I can remember. So from her tear duct, I don't know if y'all can see this. From her tear duct, let me zoom in a little more, to her end of her eye is exactly the same as the space in between. So I'm going to go back over here. It may be different. I'm not doing it exactly the same size. And I'm going to put a little mark. So I've got this one and that one. Now let's see how this one measures over here. It's three-fourths of the length. It's foreshortened. Okay. So I need to be able to, I need to see if I've got that right here. Not really. So I'm going to move it over just a tad because I want this to be the edge of her face. Since I've already measured here, and here, I'm going to move her eyes over just a tad so that it'll measure out right. Now it's three quarters, about three quarters. So now I have the width. And all of her face is fitting in this front part. If, if we wanted to, we could draw a box over this part of her face. And we would feel, you could feel the front and the side of her head. And you'd have a, a little better feel for the dimension of her head. And remember that this is all the front part. This, you know, when I start down here, this is going to be the side of her face. You can see that bone on the right can. above her left eyebrow mm -hmm. in the picture. We're just showing you just exactly that. That plane. <laughs> that plane. Is and what happens, <laughs> again, is we just... You know, when we come over here and translate this, we forget about the dimension of the face and the solidity of the head, and we start working on this as if it were all flat. And I can't tell you how often I've done it, and I've seen others, as I come around, to put the face right here and forget that it's all over here on this front part of the face. So just thinking about that box is so helpful. Now, where this edge is, probably right here, right where the shadow turns, is, is where the edge is, so I've got it over a little bit far. So probably right there, along her, the edge, and you can kind of see where the shadow starts to turn. God bless you. So now, uh, now I, it's kind of like a connect the dots. I've spent a little bit of time, 10 minutes or so, talking and, and figuring some of this stuff out. You can spend as long as you need. If you spend the whole class time on this step, it's totally fine. I'm gonna go ahead and Put some of this together and start drawing the shapes of what I see. Um, be mindful of any shadow shapes. Um, go ahead and mask those shadow shapes. As I'm drawing the eye, I'm not. I'm looking at the abstract shapes of white around her irises, keeping in mind that her iris is going to be foreshortened, squeezed in a little bit because we're looking at her from the side. So as the head turns and tilts, that circle elongates and gets more of an oval shape. Um, I don't see, I'm not real concerned about a lot of detail. I, from this distance, I don't see a lot of lid there. I just see mostly her lash line. And that's really, you don't see this side of her face at all. Everything's really squeezed in right here. Um, I can also check, I'll do it up here, it might be more helpful. 
uh, to see how this nose compares to a plumb line, and it bumps out just a tad. Uh, the tip of her nose is straight down from just inside her tear duct here. So the tip of her nose is going to be right there. That's the most difficult thing to, to gauge sometimes because we want to make the nose bump way out here or be too far, too straight down. So if you can figure out how much of a tilt there is by using your plumb line, that's probably, and I may have to adjust that. I may have misjudged it a little bit. Or the, the left side of her mouth is straight down from the bridge of her nose, which is way over here. So I like to put a circle on the tip. Her, she has a more angular nose. Mine is real angular like that too. So she, it's going to be more of a little square on the tip of her nose, but I, I put that in pretty quick just to remind me of that little um, cartilage there on the end of the nose because it's really a separate part of the um, uh, structure of the nose. Her, the inner part of her nose tilt, tilts up just a tad. Um, the right side of her nostril comes straight down from her iris up here. Let me go ahead and indicate how that goes. See a little bit more of her lid on this side. This whole side is foreshortened of her eye. It's just round right there. Then the little tear duct bumps out. And I see just a tiny bit of the eye white, but not much. Oftentimes, if I do the eyes separately, I need to go back because these angles are the same when you're working on eyes most of the time. I remember that the iris is elongated there. I see about that much of the eye, eye width. So if you move real slow, you can measure those little small increments of length if you go really slowly instead of trying to jump around. Another thing I forgot to indicate here is because of that uh, poster edge filter on there, I can see the shapes of the darks. And I can go ahead and draw those shapes in. I can see that, then I can see a little bit of a lighter plane on her nose. See this. And I go ahead and mask that in a little bit. It'll look kind of funny for a minute, but um, so the right side of her nostril does come straight down from her iris right there. Now, if that starts to look too wide to me, I can check it. I can measure it and see what is it the same as. It's the same. Let me go here. It's the same as. Is it the same as an eye width? No. Is it the same as from her tear duct to the top of the nostril? So I've got her nose just a little wide. That may just be shadow right there. So those are things we can go back and forth and continue to check ourselves on. Now the only other thing I have to figure out is the width of her mouth. And it comes, it over here, it comes straight down from the right side of her iris. Now I can also check the width of her mouth since I've made that estimate and see what is it the same as. It's hard, sometimes it's hard to find samey, samey stuff. Tear duct to almost the end of her nose. So that's about right, the width of her mouth. I would not have guessed her mouth to be that small that way. But it's foreshortened because her head's turned. It goes around the corner. Mm -hmm. it's, yep, it's rolling around. So now I already I have my estimate here. I can go ahead and draw the shape of the shadow. There's a little bit of a shadow under there. The top of her lip, I can see. Um, if I'm not sure, I can check that as well and see if there's anything above that where the points of her lips are. Just inside the iris, just actually right about here is where the point to that side of the lip is. And the other one comes straight down the bridge of the nose, right here, right there. So there's a little dip here. There's just a tiny piece of lip right there. 
Just, it's all totally foreshortened on that side. Now this first drawing will not look like Sydney. It'll just be a girl. <laughs> Her cousin, you know what I always say about that. It, and I'm not expecting it to be exactly like her. And so don't expect to have it look. Mm -hmm. What do we do? Say it out loud now, you're laughing. I tell it. I said her nose looks like a mailbox. A mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm oblivious to that. <laughs> and we all are most oblivious to our own <laughs> staff here. It's really <laughs> That's called comic relief, right? <laughs> hey, if you built a strong mailbox of a nose, though, it's not going to fall over. Uh -uh. Now, the top, you notice that I went ahead and darkened the top lip um, because it's darker. I mean, unless the light's coming from underneath, it's always going to be in shadow. So um, don't, don't hesitate to do that. So there's a face. I've got a... a a rough, quick idea of where I'm, now I can kind of come in here and fill in a little bit using angular strokes. Um, I can see better on this one where these little pieces of shadow are and I can check my plumb lines for those as well. Look, I've misjudged that. It's all the way over here, that little piece of shadow right there. That's, those are little anchor points when you've got little places like that that you can um, check yourself on all these little darks and try to put these darks in first also by moving like this you're not um, the star of the show you're not you're not wearing yourself in any one area even though that's a mailbox nose i'm not getting all stressed out about it i'll go back it's a mailbox nose but we'll fix it it was just my drawing cd I can see these shapes real easy in her hair with that poster edge on there. So I can see that there's a shadow there, and then I can see the dark is right about there. And how I know how wide that's supposed to be because I already checked. Remember, this was the same as this. So I know that's about the same. I'll go ahead and mask that in to remind me of where the dark is. It takes, you know, three seconds to do that. But that, that really gives you a feeling of solidity when you get that in pretty quick. Um, this piece of the shawl is just a little out from here. So it actually comes over here like this. There's a light piece of hair right there, so I'll leave that in there. Um, her <coughs> shoulder comes even with the bottom of her chin, so I know about where that dark area is. Just go ahead and see how that really quickly gives you a feeling of, of a little bit more solidity of her head. Now there's a dark shadow on her chin right here, and I, instead of jumping from here to here, I can look for any little variations in here. Um, actually, I see a little plane of light. I see it more over here. This little area here, I can draw that in. Then it's medium, it's darker, and here's the dust. So I guessed it about right. And that looks way too wide now, doesn't it? So I can check it. From her mouth to the back of her shawl is the same as what? Hairline to the mouth. From her mouth to the back. See, I, I misjudged that. I've already got that too thick right there. And it's amazing how our brains will misjudge these angles. This angle is turned in. This one is where her hair is. It's almost straight, but it's bumped out a little bit that way. Uh, from her eye to where the shawl starts is the same as from her tear duct to the bottom of her nose. So that's, a, that's about right. So those are all just things you can check as you're going. Um, you can also draw the shapes of these little shadows. Uh, I, I would go back and refine this now. I'd get away from it for a few minutes. Um, I know that the end of her eyebrow was there, so I'm not gonna let myself go any further there. Um, this is probably a little bit more narrow there. 
I could start shadowing in the side of her um, forehead to start making that round out. The more dimension I put on here, the more I'm going to be able to develop the likeness. Um, so if you can just get something like this on there to start with, it won't be them. It won't even, it won't probably be close to them, but it's a place to start and then you can start tweaking it. You can use one of these little tortillions. You don't have to worry, tortillons. I had somebody correct me one time, my friend. It's a blender, a little paper blender. If you want to come in here and use some of that, you don't have to worry about filling the tooth of this up because you're going to put paint on it. So you can erase, you can put your fingers on it, you can do whatever you want to do because we're going to put paint on this. It's very durable. Um, but I would spend your entire class time today getting a really good drawing. Now if you're doing something real simple that's a landscape or some fruit or something that just has big simple shapes in it, do still spend the time that you need to to measure that out, to think about the composition, um, to get your darks, mediums, and lights in. The more you can do right now with the charcoal, the better. If you're worried about, um, now I may come back and look at this later and go, oh my goodness, I have it all way, way off, so I have to fix it. But it's important, once I get ahead on there, if it takes me 15 minutes or if it takes me two hours, get up and get away from it because I've got to shake it out of my head and I've got to come back and look at it fresh. Um, it, since I have the paper and the computer, I can flip this upside down and redraw it somewhat upside down and I can even, you know, make more um, changes and tweak it and see it in a different way. It'll fool my brain and make me think it's a new image. Uh, but that's a good start. That's a good place to begin. I didn't indicate any of her braid. I would just draw the shapes of the little pieces that I see on her braid. I would not try to, to recreate this whole braid. Um, just the little pieces in between. It's going to be fun to paint that. Uh, 